Well, I did it again. I ordered more seeds. Let's see what I got this time. Welcome everybody back to the channel. You're watching Horticulture Geek and I'm Ray. Thank you so much for joining me today. So as you've already seen by the title, I have done it again and I've ordered more seeds. This time I ordered from Baker Creek. Um, if you missed my last seed unboxing video from Eden Brothers, um, I will link that down below or I may throw it up right here, but please go check that out. Eden Brothers is a great company. I like getting stuff from them. Um, but today I've got my Baker Creek order and I've got some fun stuff here that I wanted to open on camera for you, show you what I got and talk about it. So let's get right into it and see what I've got going on. It is getting very close to planting seeds. Like it's hard to believe uh, we are in January. It's almost the end of January here. Now, I know a lot of YouTubers out there have already started planting their seeds. Um, it's still a little early yet uh, to do that for me um, because I don't have the big uh, gardens with row covers or greenhouses or any of that stuff that some of those folks have. So I'm just starting seeds for personal use here in the house. Um, and I will do a seed starting video when I'm ready to do the starting of these seeds. Uh, my cold crops, so cabbages, Brussels sprouts, broccolis, um, kales, those things, um, I will start here probably this weekend um, to get those a head start to get them out into the garden while it's still cold. But all your, my warm season stuff will not get started and gosh, until March almost, into March because of my last frost here. Uh, you count back and anyway, we'll get into all that later. You're here right now to see these Baker Creek seeds. So let's get into it and see what we got. All right, let me tap the bag down. The worst thing is cutting right through a bag of seeds. All right, look at that. It's like an envelope of happy. I love it. If you have not ordered seeds before, there's just something about it. It's very addicting. You, you have to be very careful because you will quickly buy way more than you will ever need, which is why people love having seed swaps. Um, this is my current seed box. So as you can see, got a good little stash here going on. I probably, I did, I ordered too much, but that's okay, it's fun, I love it. We all love it, right? If you're watching this right now, it's cause you love it. It's exciting, seeds are happy, they are happy. What do we got? <clears throat> all righty. So up first, you know what, let me quickly separate these into a couple of categories. Oh, I only got one. Okay, we'll start right here with the free seed packet. I only got one free seed packet in this order. That's okay. Um, and it is actually cinnamon basil, which I have purchased from them before. Um, I have used it before. I actually still have some in the box and I will be planting some more of it as well this year because it is a wonderful plant. Um, now, one thing with cinnamon basil, which I did a terrible job of this last year in the garden, is I had it in my head that I wanted the basil leaves. And so I kept pinching the plant. Um, when you have basil, here, let's look at this little plant right here. So pretend this is a basil leaf. Um, and so when it puts out its little shoots, you'll come in and you'll pinch out the top so that to keep the flower 
from coming on. Um, and it keeps your basil plants nice and thick with nice green leaves on them or purple leaves, whatever kind of basil you have, so that you have lots of good basil leaves to use. But one thing that I just forgot about with cinnamon basil is that they actually have beautiful flowers that are really, really, really good pollen attract, pollinator attractors. So this year with my cinnamon basil, um, I'm gonna probably put a couple of them around and I'm gonna let them go to flower and seed because it's really pretty. And then I'll still have leaves to enjoy as well. So that's cinnamon basil. Um, since I'm kind of talking about the flowering aspect, let's go through the flower pile that I just got from Baker Creek. So first up is a nasturtium. This is nasturtium yeti, and it is a yellow nasturtium. So I'm looking forward to this. Nasturtiums are really important plants in the garden because they are pest attractors. So in addition to the, the flowers, which are just gorgeous, meandering around a garden, you can really pop nasturtiums in anywhere. The leaves of nasturtiums are edible. The flowers are edible too. People use them in salads, but they attract aphids and mites and all sorts of other really nasty, harmful garden pests. So what you do with nasturtiums is you enjoy them for their beauty, but you really just let them go because all of your problems will live happily here and leave your tomatoes and peppers and other flowers alone. So nasturtiums is a good trapper plant as well as being beautiful. And they've come in several colors. Um, so I've got the yellow this year. Next up, I have Bells of Ireland. So I have grown Bells of Ireland before. I love this plant. Um, it puts up these huge plumes of chartreuse. Chartreuse. I have grown Bells of Ireland before. I love this plant. It puts up these big, long plumes of chartreuse green, lime green flowers that are bell-shaped. Really interesting, really beautiful in the garden. So I'm looking forward to starting some of those. Next up, I have Strawberry Gumfrina. Um, if you have been following me for a while, you knew, you know I planted traditional um, Gumfrina purple, uh, Globe Amaranth or Globe Gumfrina purple last year in the garden. Um, and the Strawberry or Pink Gumfrina, there are several varieties of the pinkish color um, out there, went crazy last year. Everybody was planting the pink and I got hooked. I enjoyed it. It looked really nice. So I picked up some of the strawberry gumfrina from Baker Creek so I can have some of that in the garden. The one big problem with gumfrina that I ran into last year, rabbits love this plant. So I'm going to have to be really careful planting this out this year and making sure that I let them I protect them until they get really established. Once they're big enough to keep going, the rabbits can munch on them and not really hurt them. But if you don't protect them when they're small little seedling plants or little starter plants, a rabbit will just come and it'll be gone. So there's that one. <clears throat> Next up is the classic Zinnia scabosa. So these are the great big mixed zinnias. Um, I grew some of these last year. I have a few left in my box right here, uh, but I'm growing some more of these this year along with the candy cane mix zinnia. How beautiful is that? Sorry, let me get it out of that light where you can see it a little better. My goodness, I'm so excited about these. So, I have a crazy idea this year. Um, Y'all just have to follow along and see how it comes out. 
Uh, but for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you know that the front of the house, I, I, I have landscaped. Um, I do some pretty stuff out there. It's really hard for me to film it out there because it's, we're on a busy street in a residential neighborhood, but it's very traditional out front. I have boxwood spears, holly bushes. Um, it's very manicured, looks nice. It looks really nice. And up until this point of this year, I have tried to keep it very structured, very manicured, just looking crisp. And I decided this year, that I want it to just be a crazy zinnia flower garden explosion out there. And I've got some other stuff that I'm gonna plant around the front too. Some of these will stay in the backyard in the um, perennial border in the main garden, but I'm gonna be planting a ton of zinnias out front. So we'll see how that turns out. All right, next up on the list, I actually have Cosmos. I have two types of Cosmos. I have the Indonesian Kinakura, which is a really nice orangey Cosmos. And then I have the Apricot Lemonade. Now, how could you not get that? It's a fading ombre almost effect of a yellow down to a soft pink. Really, really pretty. Um, I think Mrs. Horticulture Geek, pink, she's a sucker for pink. Mrs. Horticulture Geek lo loves her pink. Um, pink flowers, pink stuff. So I think this is gonna be a favorite for her this year. So I've got both of those going. Next up, I ordered some Portulaca. Desert Rose, or Moss Rose, or double, this is a double flowered mix. So this is a double flowering Portulaca, meaning that, which you can see, if you have, like this is a single flower, so it's just one section of flower petals around the, the center, the stamen. These are double flower petals around the center. So that's when you see that, if you didn't know, that's what that means, what's what a double flowering mix is. Um, I love portulaca. If you grow plants in hot, dry conditions, or if you are somebody who is forgetful about watering your plants, but you still wanna try to do something that will give you color, um, you can't go wrong with portulaca, which is why a lot of people call it desert rose. Um, and I know Baker Creek calls it a moss rose, but a lot of people call this plant desert rose because it is, um, it, it's, it's hardy. It just keeps going and producing. The hotter and drier, the better. I mean, obviously you have to keep it watered um, because it will dry out and desiccate, but just an occasional good splash of water and this thing keeps going. I love portulacas. And finally on my flower list, as if all of that wasn't enough, is something that I have loved from a distance for years, but I've never tried to grow it myself, and that is Canterbury Bells. Canterbury Bells, I mean, look at the size of that bloom compared to that hand. These are ginormous bell-shaped flowers that this plant produces in the pinks, purples, and whites. So, we're gonna give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, I've never grown this before, so I've got to do some research on this one to see exactly what I need to do. And I may still end up killing it. That's kind of the fun of gardening with seeds. You never know what'll happen, but there's that. All right, now on to the okra. Uh, let's start right here. This is a special one that I ordered. <clears throat> so this is Lufagord. Now, if you follow my channel, <clears throat> excuse me, you know that last year um, I did a special project at our church with bowl gourds, where we did a lesson. You'll have to, I'll try to link that video down below. We did a whole lesson with the kids um, and used the bowl gourds as an example of patience and how trying times were in biblical times, right? Okay, so it was a whole thing. I've got a video on it. 
We're doing it again this year with loofah gourds. So these will actually not be growing in my garden. They will be growing at church. Um, I have a big fence that I grew the bowl gourds on and we'll grow the loofah gourds on there this year. And the kids at church will get to watch them from seed to harvest and make loofahs. And at the end of that, once we have our loofahs, once they've dried and cured and we can actually use the loofahs, then we will do feet washing. So kind of excited about that. So a gardening slash church project on those. Excuse me. Next up, we have the burgundy okra. Now, I'm a huge Clemson spineless okra fan. I got my horticulture degree from Clemson. I love Clemson, everything about Clemson. And the Clemson spineless okra really is delicious. But that's just pretty. So, and the reviews on it are amazing. People say it's delicious. We're gonna see what happens. <clears throat> five, ooh, drop the package. Five color Swiss chard. So, I am excited about this. I won't start these for a while because I actually love Swiss chard in the fall garden. Um, I may go ahead and plant a few now for the early spring garden. But this plant <clears throat> in your fall containers with pumpkins and mums and all that stuff, it's a winner. So I went ahead and grabbed the seeds while I was doing this other big order. <clears throat> okay, now these are super fun. I'm excited about these. These are the Hidu, Hidau, whatever, tiny, the tiny bok choys. Look at how little those things are. So these are little bitty baby bok choys. Um, I enjoy bok choy. I've got some growing in the garden right now. Um, and I just thought it would be super fun to have baby bok choys, just little rows of baby bok choys that we can go out there and pop them out, throw them in stir fries, saute them up, eat them up. I so looking forward to that. And I thought this would be a fun one also for the kids. Um, my kids like getting out there with fun, unique stuff and doing that. So there we go. <clears throat> the Sichuan Red Beauty Radish is up next. I just thought it looked pretty. We'll see. <laughs> okay. So if you'll think back to just a minute ago when I was telling you about the cinnamon basil and how I forgot to let it go to flower and I just was so obsessed with keeping it as a bushy, nice plant. Well, I got this this year, which is blue spice basil, which even the picture shows it going to flower. So that's what the flowers look like and it'll cover itself with those bluey, purpley flowers on it. This will go to flower. I got this specifically to sprinkle in the garden to let it go to flower because I need pollinators to come in. I wanna feed them. I wanna be a safe harbor. Um, and plus, I mean, it's just beautiful having bees and butterflies and stuff flutter around the garden. It, it really does add so much to the space. So blue spice basil is on the list this year. Next up, Sugar and peas. So these will get planted very quickly. It's time to start planting peas, depending on your last frost, because peas go in the ground before last frost, because peas uh, grow when it's cold, and they taste better when they've had a kiss of old man winter. So I've heard these are good. The reviews on these are really good. So I'm hoping we'll get a good pea harvest coming up real soon. And the last one on this list that I bought today was the Purple Lady Bok Choy. Again, I'm just currently obsessed with Bok Choy. I'm loving the regular green Bok Choy that's in the garden right now. And then I saw those baby Bok Choys and then I was like, well, if I'm gonna go it, if I'm gonna do it, let's just go all in on the Bok Choy and throw some color out there and try the Purple Ladies. So we'll see. So that is my seeds from Baker Creek that I just ordered. That's a lot. And obviously, I won't grow all of this stuff because 
I, it's a, I'm a small suburban backyard garden. Um, so like these Gumpfrina seeds come with a minimum of 50 seeds in this bag. I, I don't need 50 strawberry Gumpfrina plants. That would be my whole yard. So I'll just start, you know, probably 10 or 15 of these. And I'll save the rest for next year. So that's one good thing with seeds. If you store them properly in a, like a nice, I use this box where they can stay um, cool. I keep this on a shelf out in the laundry room where it never gets too hot, it never gets too cold. Well, I just keep them in a nice regulated environment where they're contained, where they cannot get wet, or they won't get rodents eating them up. Um, then you can save seeds like this for a couple of years. Um, <clears throat> after about two years, your germination rates will probably start to go down, um, but you can still give it a shot. So if you've got a bag of seeds that you find that you've had for three, four, five years, or maybe you find some seeds in grandma's cupboard when you're cleaning it out, looking for that platter that you wanted to inherit. If, if you can put it in the dirt and see what happens, it'll keep. Uh, it, if it'll grow, it'll grow. If not, what's the worst that happened is you slid a seed in the dirt. So always give it a shot, but I will save a lot of these for next year or years beyond. Now there's something else I wanted to show you because it is also, let me put this away. It is also time for you guys to start thinking about your summer bulbs. Now, I know most gardeners and most people who are new to gardening, you hear fall bulbs, fall bulbs, fall bulbs all the time. Tulips, 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 daffodils, daffodils, daffodils. That's great. I plant tulips, I plant daffodils, I love them. But don't forget your summer bulbs because it's time to start buying them. Your stores have started stocking them and I've already picked up mine. So let's slide this over and show you. So I have picked up three different types of bulbs for this year um, and I got mine at Sam's Club. So if you're not a member of Sam's Club or if you don't live near a Sam's Club, I'm sorry. Um, try your big box stores or garden centers or home improvement centers. Everybody is starting to carry the summer bulbs right now. And here's the trick with summer bulbs, because I know a lot of you are probably watching this video right now and thinking, it's January. Why in the world is he buying summer bulbs? Because each of these stores get a limited stock, and if you don't get them, they're going to be gone. So I'm going to quickly show you what I got. First up right here, dahlias, dahlias, however you say it. So I have 15 dinner plate dahlia mix. So these dahlia blooms. Get dinner plate size. So they're pretty big size flowers. Next up I have gladiolas and yes i know if you've watched my videos before last year i planted this bag of glad a black just like this of gladiolas and i said oh my gosh this is too many bulbs i'm never doing this again well i'm doing it again because i'm planting these in the front yard to go along with my zinnias um because i really want just flowers everywhere across the front and these are really good cut flowers along with the zinnias so if you're looking at doing cut flowers Gladiolas and zinnias are really good choices along with sunflowers. Um, and there are 90 bulbs in this bag. And then my third thing that I bought are caladiums. So these are just a staple in the shade garden. Um, they bring pops of color, they bring texture, and they bring interest. Um, and there are 36 bulbs in this box. And at Sam's Club, these packages are $15 each, $14.98, I think. So $14.98 for 36 bulbs, $14.98 for 90 bulbs, and $14.98 for 15 bulbs, which that's a good price for dahlias. They're expensive. So those are the bulbs I got. So it's time for that. So that's it, guys. That's the seeds and the summer bulbs that I've picked up thus far. 
um, and the rain clouds have parted and there's a little sunshine coming through right now so I thought I'd come out here and end this video here if you're buying anything from Baker Creek or Eden Brothers or getting any summer bulbs, let me know what you're picking up. I'd love to see what you're excited to grow this year. You can leave me a comment below or you can tag me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Horticulture Geek, just like my YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you and see what you're excited to grow this year. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. I would love to have you join along on the journey. Give me that thumbs up, but until next time, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening.